Hello, in this video we're going to look at the welfare effects of deficiency payment price floor. So here's our market, downward sloping demand, upward sloping supply, and we're going to impose a deficiency payment price floor. The government guarantees producers receive $7 per unit, so that's what the $7 coming across horizontally is representing. Producers base their output decision on receiving $7 per unit and bring 7 units to the market. So at a price of $7, the quantity supplied is 7 units. Consumers are going to pay sellers $3 per unit to buy all 7 units. So at $3 per unit, consumers would buy all 7 units. The government then pays sellers a deficiency payment, the difference between seven and three or four dollars. So sellers net seven dollars per unit, three dollars of that comes from consumers, four dollars of that comes from the government. So let's look at the welfare facts. We're going to start with no deficiency payment. So the equilibrium price is five, the equilibrium quantity is five. Consumer surplus is the difference between the height of the demand curve and the price that consumers pay up to that last unit or the fifth unit. So area A and B is consumer surplus. Producer surplus with no deficiency payment is going to be the area represented by the letters D and G, the difference between the price that sellers or producers are receiving and the supply curve up to that last unit. Uh, the government is not uh, involved in the market right now, so there's no government spending. And total surplus is just A plus B plus D plus G. Now moving on to the deficiency payment price floor. As we said, consumers are going to be paying $3 per unit, and they're going to buy 7 units. Producers are going to be receiving $7 per unit, and again, selling 7 units and the government will be paying producers the deficiency payment, the difference between seven and three or four dollars per unit on the seven units. So consumer surplus is going to be the difference between the height of the demand curve and the price that consumers pay for these units, which is three dollars, up to the seventh unit. So we have this giant triangle here represented by letters A, B, D, and E. So that's consumer surplus. Producer surplus is going to be based on the fact that producers are receiving $7 when all is said and done, and they're selling 7 units. So the difference between the price of $7 and the supply curve all the way up to that last unit. So we have this big triangle here being represented by letters B, C, D, and G. That is producer surplus. And now for government spending. Uh, the government is paying producers $4 per unit on 7 units, so that's technically $28, and it's going to be represented by this rectangle. Okay, this rectangle is a 4 by 7 rectangle, and that is the amount of expenditures that the government incurs because of this program. So that's letters B, C, D, E, and F, and I have minus signs because this is an outflow. Okay, with when we're having a tax in the market, uh, the government is taking money in, so we count that as a positive inflow. This is an outflow, so we got minus signs here. So adding up these three values here, consumer surplus, producer surplus, and government spending, we're left with the following for total surplus, A, B, D, G, minus F. Uh, summing everything up then, we can look at the changes. The consumers gain consumer surplus equal to area D and E. Producers gain producer surplus equal to the area of B and C. Uh, government spending here is the, the change here is the minus B minus C minus D minus E minus F. And then canceling some things out here, the B's and C's cancel, the D's and E's cancel, and you're left with minus F. So there is a deadweight loss or an inefficiency attributable to this deficiency payment price floor. So to sum up, yes, consumers gain. Yes, producers gain. However, the government expenditures 
the losses to the government exceed the gains to consumers and producers collectively, so there is an inefficiency or a deadweight loss. Okay, I'll stop here.